standing by to take your calls. We'll be answering your toughest tech questions. Plus, Leo's here with another good tip for you. Live from the Tech TV studios in San Francisco, it's a special all-call edition of the Screen Savers. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Screen Savers. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Kevin Rose. Thanks for joining us on TSS, the place on television where you can be sure to get live product demos, interviews, tips and tricks, and the very best in computer help. And an outstanding audience, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We Great audience. We're a little scared of them tonight. They're a little enthusiastic. Did you see the guy in the yellow shirt? Yeah. yeah they made custom shirts for us out there. Take, take a look at those shirts. And they, they modded them, too. Made modded they got a shirts fresh mod right down there. That's awesome. Aww. I like it. It's a good name for a show. Tonight's a very special show. It is an all-call edition of the Screen Savers. Nothing but your live calls answering your questions. And Sarah's going to kick in with some of your most frequently asked questions. It's a little different. A little different. A little different. But you ask about it a lot, so we're going to tell you about them. Yes, indeed. Dan? Yo, I'm on the phone call, Prowl. How, How are the calls going? Going, oh, it's off the hook. There's so <laughs> many people calling right now. Just give, <laughs> give me a call. The phone number is 888-989-7879. And for the final emails, the email address is screensavers at techtv.com. Do you really do anything, or is the intern behind you doing it's all the work? It's actually Ryan taking care of this for me. There he is. So you're just relaxing <laughs> right now. Let's be honest. I'm just a pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ready to feel the... Oh, look at Mr. Pretty Face. All the men think so, too, don't they, Dan, with the emails? What? What a dork. <laughs> what are you talking about? So, let's <laughs> kick it right <laughs> over to the Daily Bring everything together. Steer the ship back on That's course. right. Sarah, do you have a topic for us to argue about today? I do. Are you ready for the topic? We are indeed. Okay, yeah. Okay, then. Here it is. Are tax certifications worthwhile? Go. Absolutely. You should spend every cent you have before you're employed to get a string of initials next to your name, MCS, ABC, CBS, X, A... Who am I kidding? Yeah. Yeah. Every yeah. IT, every IT yeah. manager yeah. I've ever met, every IT manager I've ever met, East Coast, West uh -huh. Coast, New York City, financial guys, California guys, media mm -hmm. guys, they all say, get a job, pull cables, pull wires, mm -hmm. install graphics cards, do tech support. And then if they say, we want to give you this other job, but you need a, you know, a, an A-plus certificate or <laughs> A-plus certificate uh, <laughs> or any of those, then go ahead and get your certificate. But, man, I wouldn't spend a lot of money on getting certificates. Well, the funny point. thing now is that you see, it's like, you see all these different resumes that are coming in, right. and we see a lot of them here. And there's a lot of, like, you know, book knowledge that's out there. Right. There's all these, like, fast certified courses. You can be certified in 24 hours, just read our, you know, and they give you the answers mm -hmm. to what they think are going to be the questions. And you have all these people that don't actually have any real-world knowledge. They haven't been there when a server goes down right. with the added pressure. They've tested it in the lab, and they've been like, repair drive. And it worked great in the lab setup, <laughs> you know, in the demo mock setup. Right. But uh, they need real-world experience. And nothing can supplement that, not even a certification. Uh, the other thing I found out is, like, one of the things we love to find out here is, have you worked in a restaurant, right? The classic question. Because anybody who can survive two or three years, either in a production line, in a kitchen, or waiting tables. You asked me that when I was yeah. coming in for the interview. You and you're like, me. you laugh, right? It's a classic question, though, because we want to know. It's like, you know, how do you deal under pressure? How do you deal with other people? Can you be polite on the phone? Are you going to be that evil tech support the guy that goes, read the manual, jerk, yeah. click? Which, actually, we had a guy, actually, at Ziff Davis, and I worked in New York, that was like that. When you asked me that question, I had no idea what you are talking about, because I worked at Olive Garden and made breadsticks. Right. And I'm like, how do breadsticks in, like, working in TV <laughs> right. have anything to but do with it? But on the flip side, is that also led in, you're like, um, I've been, like, working in, you know, federally secure, you know, data centers in Nevada and in big scary people where <laughs> things that blow up. It's like, oh, okay, so you actually have, you know what I mean? But a lot of people that come in, we're looking like, what have you done? What do you know? Certificates, like for us, you know, he's got, you have, what certificates do you have? A ton of them. I don't even want to talk about them. I'm embarrassed by some of them. Well, it's sad. What well, are you embarrassed by? Well, I, what did you well, spend money to get certified in that you wouldn't spend money to get the certified whole thing, in again? Well, the A-plus certification right. was one that almost anybody, any geek can go out there and take without even reading a book. If you have a pulse, you can yeah. probably get an A-plus well, certification. Well, if you know the basics of computers, IRQs, you know, all that stuff, PCI bus, like what they stand for, how they work, mm -hmm. you can go in there and pretty much take that without even having to worry about anything. Right. I went in there, I'd thumb through the book in, in the bookstore, and I was like, oh, this is easy stuff. I right. took it really easy. Now, there are some hardcore certifications. There's right. certain Cisco certifications and certain certifications that 
make you actually get on a machine and they simulate environments mm -hmm. when you're doing the test. So Cisco certifications, high-end server. What about like Linux certifications? Yeah, there's a Linux certification. Red Hat has a certified Red Hat network administrator that's mm -hmm. really hardcore. Uh, some of those, I would, if you're going to go for a certification, right. go hardcore, go the high-end stuff. Don't worry about all this little A-plus stuff in right. the, the low-end. I, I don't think that's a big deal. I don't know. I hope it makes sense to you. Well, you know, get the certificate when you need it. College degree. That's first and foremost, right. I would say, for sure. College degree and work experience. Sarah, you have yeah. any certifications? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Cool. There we go. <laughs> did, you, did you ever work in a restaurant? <laughs> nope. Didn't do I that. bet she's got a college degree. She does that indeed. I do. Okay. That All right. I do. Yes. Woo. Terry joins us on the phone. From Terry. Hemet? Hey, You're in Hemet, California, Terry? Yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Is it hot? Uh not not terribly hot, a little overcast. Mm. A little gray, cloudy. Uh not quite rainy cloudy, just kinda just chilling me. cloudy. <laughs> that's Hemet. Yeah. <laughs> How can we help you today, Terry? Well, I got a question. A little while back, I don't know, a few months ago, you did a little snippet on uh, the, the CDs that get record your recordable CD CDRs. Uh, right. I guess there was some some magazine in the Netherlands or something that recorded right. these things, threw them in a drawer. After 18 months, he got a wild hair and decided to pull them out and check them out, and he found that he'd already lost data off of them. Uh -huh. uh, I'm kind of curious. Do CDRWs, because they're I know they're they, they like change states rather right. than be a die based thing. Do they, uh, do they suffer from the same kind of degradation over time? Um, I think the biggest issue with either one of them is the quality of the media that you start with. It's my understanding, and this is a loose understanding, that CDR is generally a better, can be a better archival tool than CDRW. Um, CDRW, for people that know, it's rewritable. Basically, you write on it. When you want to rewrite on it again, you, you run a laser over it as a slow speed. And it, I, I can't remember if it, it removes the crystalline state or re-enters yeah. the crystalline state that basically blocks the mirror on the back. Um, I started like nosing around on this because this is like a great question. Mm -hmm. And CD Freaks is a oh you know what you're still hooked up there. CD Freaks is a uh, is a website that talks about this all the time. Uh, CDFreaks.com. Um, and what's interesting is is some of the stuff I found out when I started searching around is that. Uh, the media you buy in the store, right? If it says Maxell or TDK or whatever it is, right. it's almost like basically there's like a half dozen a half dozen sites that manufacture CDR, mm -hmm. and whoever's got the best deal, the 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 company that brands it and sells it is going to buy them, right? So they're so private labeling and they're the, stamping their, exactly. their name on the outside. So that so, CompUSA disc could be the same thing as a TDK disc or exactly. Memrex or something. Or the CompUSA disc could be a better disc than the TDK disc. Because a lot of the, what we found is a lot of the discs um, come from, they all come from the same place. Whoever's selling cheap, that's who gets wrapped, and that's what's on that 1995 right. deal. Now, if you're recording MP3s for a road trip, you don't care. But if you're archiving family photos, digital photographers and people who scan in a lot of photos spend a lot of time worrying about archival media. Mm -hmm. Archival media essentially means that it's got a guarantee. Kodak's claiming that they're getting up to like 100 years, right, and which is phenomenal. But Part of what, uh, what's interesting is you look at the Optical Storage Technology Association is basically they're saying a lot of people who test this stuff, eh, they're not really paying attention. What, what we do know is you're going to spend a lot more money for archival quality media. Mm -hmm. It's going to have a gold backing rather than a silver backing. It's going to have an incredibly well-maintained production process, and it's going to have a very, very consistent layering of the metal that's the reflective and the material that gets burned away, the substrate material. I've, I've never seen this. Like gold media, it's like gold reflective on the backside. Right. Where Rather would you buy something like that? I don't see that at CompUSA or Best Buy. You're probably not going to, but you're going to look for like uh, Kodak Ultima, Kodak Gold Ultima. There's another company that you've probably never heard of. It used to be Mitsumi. That uh, It's uh, MAM-A, MAM-A, and they actually make uh, their gold CDR. Basically, what you're looking for is an archival brand media from a major manufacturer. And those are the things that are really going to make a difference. And it's, it's all in the materials they use. Let me scoot by back there, and the standards they maintain on the site make a huge difference. I go for CDR, I go for an archival grade, and yeah, it will make a huge difference in the longevity of the disk, as will how you store it. Dry, cool place, out of direct sunlight. Excellent. So you freaked well, a lot of people out when you first told them about that story, because I remember we got a ton of emails the next day. Yeah, it's, it was, you know, and it's it's amazing. Right? The, the guy in the Netherlands like, I'm gonna, I burned all these discs. I'm gonna put them in a drawer in a cool office right. for three years. And basically, the guy got bored and yanked them out. And he was like, Wow, a third of the data is missing off this disc. That's a scary thought, yeah. you know. You know, your tax records, pictures, data you oh, want, yeah. you know, stories. Of course. Yeah, but you know, you'll spend a lot of more money. Like we're talking about a buck to a buck thirty-five a disc for archival quality media. But you it's know. worth it if you have the special documents you need to save. Good stuff. Thanks for the call. We're just getting started. Later on in the show, we're going to help out a viewer who wants to buy a pre-modded PC case. You know, she's going to give us some ideas. And after the break, Mark from Nova Scotia wants to learn how to hack DVRs. Cool. Dark.
Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. How you doing, Mark? Hey, Mark. Not too bad. How are you guys tonight? Excellent. Pretty good. I, I got to ask, what part of Nova Scotia is Dartmouth in? Um, it's right around Halifax. It's basically the same thing now. It's, they just call it HRM, but it's got it. still Dartmouth to me, I guess. So you're part of Nova Scotia where there's a lot of people. I guess you could say a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, compared to like you scoot up around the Evangeline Trail on the west side, and there's like a village, and there's no one, and then there's a village. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's a lot more people here than there are in the outskirts. Good to know, man. How can we, we want to hack a DVR disc? What's going on yeah, with that? Yeah, well, more or less, um, you guys have had uh, TiVo and Replay TV for a while, like commercially. Up here, we're just starting to get them released by our, our local cable companies. Mm -hmm. um, today, I'm actually the third person in my area to get it installed in Halifax. Um, and it's a Motorola um, 6208 box. And I'm just wondering, where's the best place for me to look to see if anybody's ever messed around with this box? Oh, okay. So you got a, basically, you got a digital video recorder. It's provided to you by your cable company. And you want to see if you can add a larger hard drive or pull the information off and stuff like that? Exactly. You know, the best place to go, this is like a classic time for a Google search. Um, and what you want to start looking around, it's like, you know, let's just type in the, you know, Motorola 6208 DVR hack, and let's see what we come up with. Mark, do you happen to know who powers the box? Sometimes there's TiVos and different devices that go behind the scenes. Is, is it a TiVo underneath all that, or? Um, it's not. It's just for our local uh, cable company. I mean, there's no TiVo or Replay TV thing on it at all. It just seems okay. like it's through our company, but it's a Motorola box. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not coming up with much on that. Like to look ABS forums. Okay, ABS forums, yeah. definitely. Joshua, ABS forums. Joshua Brentano, who is definitely one of our big hackers here when it comes to the DVRs, says ABS forums is the place to go, a website that actually has, there, it's a huge message board of all different types of, what's that? ABS forum, singular. ABS forum, okay. ABS forum is the website. And they will have all different types of information on there as far as different hacks. And, yeah, here it is right here. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you have, like, a question about home theater or audio, this is a great place to, if you want to get a lot of opinions really fast. And do, 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 special forum, display devices, video processors. Home theater general, Joshua, or where would you go to look for that? Over on the left says ABS forum dash all forums. Okay. Dash all forums. There we go. Cool, right. so that's a good resource, definitely, to point them in the direction to. That's kind of hard, though, because when you have a proprietary product like right. that, something that isn't mainstream, that only, you know, they're only starting to roll out to maybe 10, 20,000 people, yeah. it's like, it's hard to get people to start hacking those until they become, you know, available in your local Best Buy. And the other thing is find out, though, is if a device comes out, if it's like in the Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. it could be 100 people in the Silicon Valley, if it's the right 100 people, right. they're going to start It'll hacking hacked, and they'll post sure. a website. Start searching on Google, start searching on the AVS forums. Um, Motorola is a big company. Somebody somewhere has probably at least started looking to find out what might be possible on that. It's a good question. Sorry we couldn't help you on that one. But we do have another caller on the line. Michael joins us on the G4 Tech TV Netcam Network. Hey, Michael, where are you calling from? Hey, Buffalo, New York. How are you doing? Good. Excellent. How are you doing? All right. Well, it is. I got a... Uh, right now, I use Windows XP Home, right? Uh-huh. But I'm really not too satisfied with Windows. And I was thinking of, like, changing my operating system over to, like, a, a Linux-based system. Uh-huh. And I was thinking about using possibly the old Windows that's now Lenspire. Uh huh. And I was wondering if that would be a good switchover, or if there's a better, uh, easy to use Linux program that I could use. Well, a, a couple of years ago, we would have said no, not Lindos or, or Linspire, as you point out. It's called. It's gotten a lot better. Yeah, I, been, you've been testing this since day one. The second yeah. they came out with this, you started playing around. In the early days, it was like Linux that you paid to make it easier to download you know, software that would normally come free on the extra five disks or that you would download right. off, off, of, uh, off of the Internet. Right. You know, Lins you know, Linspire, Lindos, whatever you want to call it, uh, Linspire, I, we should probably right. say, since the whole Microsoft court fight was lost. Yeah, that's but, another reason I want to change. I don't like the way Microsoft pursues them. Yeah, I, you can't say I blame you on that one, although the truth is, is, is I think, you know, Michael Roberts, the guy that runs Lindos, was probably looking for the fame of a court battle when he chose that name. Yeah. Um, you know, the... Yeah. Uh, the thing about this is that he has a lot, there's a lot of controversy around Linspy right now because he's taking a lot of open source applications that a lot of people have poured hours upon hours and hours in creating right. and he's charging for it. And a lot of people don't like the fact that he has a subscription-based model. Right. And you have to pay for updates. You basically pay, and I'll double-check, it's about around $100 a year to, to use their instant one-click download system. Would Which you is recommend Debian's Debian? Back end. Yeah, Debian is basically what they built this entire platform off of. Uh, yeah, we download Debian and try that first, Michael. Um, you know, uh, 
the Lindos or Linspire offers a little more hold handing and help for a lot of people. Um, but you know what? I just try. I'd try Debian if that's too frustrating. I'd try uh, Mandrake. Yeah, Mandrake. If that's too frustrating, try Linspire. And if that's too frustrating, go OS 10. You know, there sell your system on eBay. You know, get a Macintosh. <laughs> and that way, you know, you want to fight Microsoft in your own personal way. That's a good way to do it. Good call, Michael. Thanks for the call, Michael. And of course, you get a Screen Savers T-shirt for being a netcam caller. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that lovely? Now, here is Sarah with the first of our frequently asked questions. That's right. We're often asked by our Windows, Windows viewers running XP systems, Windows viewers, how much memory does my XP system really need to run efficiently? We're going to give you our authentic screensavers answer after the break. Also, Chris from Glensbyer, Maryland is going to need help picking the right CPU. And up next, we'll help Dustin with finding a pre-modded PC case when the screensavers continue. The clock will continue to run. Fourth down, seconds remaining. They're going to need to call a T.O. Yo, this is T.O. Game Informer calls it the one football game you must have. Yeah. And IGN says it will own your soul. Get ESPN NFL 2K5 from ESPN Video Games. Hey, how'd you get this number? Rated E for everyone. We pose the frequently asked screensavers question, how much memory does my XP system really need to run efficiently? Well, XP users, to simply run XP, you can get by with 256 megabytes of RAM, but anything resembling optimal performance was going to need more than that. In fact, the screensavers recommends a minimum of 512 megs for an XP system that doesn't completely suck. More facts coming up on the show, but for now, back to the calls. Dustin joins us on the phone from Eagle Lake, Minnesota. How are you doing, Dustin? Ah, I'm doing just fine. Hi, Pat. Hi, Kevin. Actually, we got Yoshi here. Kevin? Oh, Yoshi. We I'm lined sorry. up Yoshi. You <laughs> had a question about pre-modded cases. So we yeah. went to the mod master himself. Yeah. Um, I've looked on the net um, on place, lots of um, price watch listed slates, and I've seen some pre-modded cases, but I was wondering if there's one website that stands all above the others. Well, I like a few websites, like frozencpu.com, mm -hmm. uh, Xoxide usually has some good cases on it. Um, the thing about like pre-modded is like you, you'll get a lot of hardcore modders that will be like, well, that's not really modded if you buy it that way. So we can call I find a, some, well, it, a I, fancy I call it case. A, a case that you like the features of. Okay. Or whatever you want to call it. I call it pre-modded, too. Professionally but, modded? You, uh, that's actually another option, too, is go to some of the forums that you'd like, you know, like search through, like, you know, Pimp Rig, uh, Gruntville, Featon, Bitech, and, like, contact one of the modders that you really like their work and say, hey, how much to do a case for me if you want something totally tricked custom? How about for, like, you know, well, Frozen CPU, they, I mean, they have modified cases, so you can go through their list of cases here, and they do some basic mods, like mm -hmm. lights and fans and windows and stuff like that. Any personal favorites up there? Um... Come on, you know you got to... There's something in Well, there. you know, I like the Seracle case. It's okay. I mean, it depends on the case. Mm -hmm. I, I just kind of like this little front grill guy here on this one. But it's, it's really depends upon what your tastes are. Some are going to tickle your fancy. Some you're just going to hate. Dustin, any particular kind of mod you were looking for? Or any... any do you want a giant shiny case? Do you want something that looks like a bowl of melting ice cream? I mean, what would you like your case to look like, Dustin? Something dark. Dark. Something dark. Well, you'd have to look through and see what, what you consider dark. What I consider dark might be a little different than what you'd consider dark. I'm not sure. Is that something worth researching and putting in the show notes for him, Yoshi? Sure. I'll find a dark case for you. Dustin, you might... Uh... <laughs> he means that in the nicest way, Dustin. Oh, I do. <laughs> Check the show notes. We'll get some listings for you. Frozen CPU. What were those other two websites? Um, X Oxide. Mm -hmm. um, those would be my two main choices. From there, I would actually go to the forums and just... Say, hey, where has the best pre-modded cases, guys? And cool. People will throw you tons of links. Good stuff. Dustin, great question. Folks, don't go anywhere. More live calls coming up after the break. We're going to pick out a viewer. Well, we're going to help a viewer pick out a CPU that's right for their needs. Don't forget that g is airing tomorrow. The award show for gamers starts at 7.30 p.m. with red carpet arrivals. And the event itself starts at 8 p.m. It'll have games... You know, award show stuff like people in tight outfits and big gold ward type thingies. And did we mention it's presented by Eevee Games and Jeep? It is. I like things in life that are the best. My best friend. The best shortcuts. The best cuts. 
And of course, the best place for these, my son. Chris, let me call you back. I'm a little busy. For the best deals in wireless, it's Radio Shack. Like the Sprint PCS Vision Phone VI660 by Samsung, just $19.99 after $160 instant savings with two-year agreement. Did I mention the best sport? Radio Shack. My name is Jess Gessner. I lost 115 pounds with Bowflex. I'm a teacher, and I recently showed my kids a tape of a third grade teacher teaching a class. And they're like, who is that guy? That guy is huge. Wait, that's you, Mr. Gessner. That's you. I said, yes, that used to be me at 310 pounds. If you want great results like Jess, then call for a free video or DVD from Bowflex. I've tried a lot of different things to lose weight. I've seen a nutritionist. I did aerobics. I went to certain classes, and nothing seemed to work. I decided to uh, order a Bowflex because I saw in the commercials the quick results that people were getting and I knew that I needed to have quick results in order to stay motivated. I started working on the program just like it said, three days a week for 20 minutes and I was getting results. The first six weeks, 26 pounds. Six months later, 70 pounds. Every other day for 20 minutes was not a problem. It was actually something I looked forward to. And now through this special offer, you can own the new Bowflex Extreme with no money down and payments of just $19 a month. This is a great machine to have at home because you can do everything. You can do your arms, you can do your legs, you can do your chest. There's not one part of your body that this machine can't hit. It's empowering, you feel great, you just, like, I can conquer the world because this machine just makes you feel that good and makes you that strong. The Bowflex Extreme is backed by a seven-year warranty and comes with a six-week 100% satisfaction guarantee. Thanks to the Bowflex, I was really able to get the kind of results where I can take my shirt off and I can be out in public and I can be confident about myself. I know other guys who ate sandwiches and lost a lot of weight, but I don't see them on TV with their shirt off. Call for a free DVD or video or visit us at ExtremeBowflex.com and find out how to get your Bowflex for just $19 a month today. Special all call edition of the Screen Sivers. I'm Kevin Rose. And I'm Patrick Norton. Coming up in this half hour, we're going to take more of your live calls and more of your live calls, and then we're going to answer your email questions. Nice. Ha! Take that. Chris joins us on the phone right now. Chris, where are you calling from? Glen Burnie, Maryland. All right. It's a big day for Maryland. It is. Maryland's taking over. Most definitely. What's your question from Maryland, Chris? I'm interested in getting a, uh, one of the media centers from uh, Microsoft. Would you guys recommend to get an AMD 64 or a Pentium 4 processor? And Do you, you like to pay more money? No. <laughs> Actually, I mean, uh, the, the truth is, what, or do you, you definitely want the, the, the Windows XP Media Center edition? See, I don't really know much about computers, but what, like, from what I've like, seen so far, like the Media Center, like, for the most part, is what I want, like, the things that I want to do, like right. VHS and DVDs and like, record TV, watch TV. Right. What's the price difference? I have no idea. Because right. I'd, be, I'd be curious, I didn't even realize anybody was selling Media Center oh, PCs yeah. with the Athlon, probably Alien. Oh, with the maybe? Athlon? Yeah, I didn't know they were. What company are you going through to, to find this? Right now, I've been look, looking on like the computer shopper magazines mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. I've seen this place called iBuy Power or Cyber Power. Also, I've been looking through Cyber, Cyber Power. Power. I like that. <laughs> Cyberpower.com. That's not it. <laughs> that's I don't know if I trust a place called Cyber Power. Um, generally speaking, is, is for something as complicated as a media PC, I'd almost say I'd almost say definitely, absolutely, totally, utterly buy from a major PC manufacturer. Mm -hmm. One, because it's, it's a lot of complicated parts to go together. That's why they won't sell the Media Center edition of Windows XP to, to any home user. Like, they won't sell it to us to right. install. They you have can't a, just buy the OS in a yeah, box. The uh, iBuy Power, this, this is looking a little better um, if you take a look at that. Um, I like, you know, we love the Athlon 64. It's great gaming chip. It's got a lot of power. For some of the really funky um, video compression that, that you'd be doing on that to capture the television video and put it on your hard drive, uh, I would probably say there's some advantages to the Pentium 4 there and some of the encoding. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'd probably, either way, you're going to get a really fast chip. Um, there's the Media Center. It starts at 1359. The, uh, I would probably say go from a major manufacturer, especially if you're not, like, super geek, Chris. Uh, go from a major manufacturer, and I would get, uh, man, Intel P4, 3 gigahertz, P4, 2.8 gigahertz. I don't even think they're offering an Athlon XP. <laughs> Yeah, I don't see that. that gonna, Yoshi did uh, actually brought a couple of those in here. I'm not sure if they were AMD. Was it an AMD chip, the Media Center PC that you had a while back? It was an Athlon 64. 
Word. It was the Athlon 64? It wasn't a media center, though. Oh, it was a media center. No, it was just a nice small form factor. Oh, it looked right. like a media center. Yeah. <laughs> Other than, like, a media center, what like what would I be able to get, like, for, like, the same... Like, to do the same things that a media center would do? Like, what, is there any other programs or anything I can get? <laughs> Buy a TiVo. Spend 150 bucks. Um, or better yet, a replay TV where you can rip right. them off and take them right back to your computer. You uh, know. I mean, uh, what do you, I mean, why, why would you use, why, just out of curiosity, why a, a media center PC rather than, say, a TiVo or a replay, Chris? I, 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 I've been trying to save up for a computer for like the last, like, couple years, and I uh -huh. finally have enough money to get one. And I just went to, like, Best Buy and Circuit City, and they were telling me, like, the media centers were, like, the way to go for the things that I told them I wanted to do, like, burn DVDs, burn right. movies. The me, I mean, in terms of in terms of burning DVDs and movies, pff, no difference. I mean, buy buy a regular Windows XP system, save yourself a lot of money. Um, if you want to use, if you if you want to attach your PC, part of your home theater, use it to power your home theater, you know, speakers, use it to power a, a big nice television. The media center PC starts to make sense. Yeah. Um, in terms of you know, in in terms of using it as a, a personal video recorder or a digital video recorder. They do a pretty good job, um, but you could also spend like 130 yeah. bucks right now on rebate to buy a TiVo. Most people have um, probably have no idea what he's talking about. I mean, it's just a media center for your TV. Lets you play MP3s on your television, right. and yeah, it's, just, it's a special version of Windows XP version, that, yeah. that has some additional functionality. They're Capture cool, um, but you know, in terms of burning DVDs and stuff like that, not much different from a regular system with a DVD burner. In terms of capturing video and stuff, they do a pretty nice job compared yeah. to most you know PC-based software systems. You know, I buy a TV. Check out the ones from Alienware. Yeah, buy a TV or check out the Alienware's are really nice. They're really nice. Yeah. Not yeah. cheap, but they're really nice. <laughs> Thanks for the call. Next up, no call? From is uh, Indian Country, California. Salon? Salon? Anyone? Oh, yeah. Hey. Hey, Salon. It's Celine. 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 <laughs> are you in Selena's or Selena? Celine. No, his name's Celine. <laughs> I'm utterly confused. <laughs> Your name's Celine, right? It's with an M. Salim. Salim. Got it. Gotcha. Where are you calling from, buddy? Canyon Country, California. There Very we go. Cool. How can we help you today? Um, my Mac hard drive is corrupt, and I was wondering if there's, like, any cheap or maybe free program that I can use to, like, recover the files. Oh, Ooh. that hurts. Yeah. Um, what kind of files are you looking for, Salim? Uh, like, I just want to recover all my files, because I, my sister, she has all these music, and we Lots of MP3s and stuff. Um, here's this, this is a great Macintosh program. You mess around with Disk Warrior at all? Have you seen that one that repairs the hard drives and looks for hard drive problems? You are Macintosh or a PC? Macintosh. Macintosh. Yeah. yeah. And are you running OS 10? Um. Yeah, but the very first version. Okay, so it's an old. It's an older Mac then. Yeah. Okay. And the hard drive crashed to where you can't read anything off it, or can you get to some files? Some say they're corrupt. No, it's, it just doesn't show on the on the desktop. Oh, you lost the drive altogether. Yeah. So, so the system won't boot at all. No. Ooh. Um, could you reinstall OS 10? Would it? Would that erase the hard drive if you reinstalls OS 10 on the system? Well, if it's going to see the drive, it might ask you to do a couple different things. If it says, you know, it can do a reinstallation over the top of itself, right. he might be okay there because it's not going to really touch any of the files that he's written as far as Word documents and preferences and things of that nature. Um, another thing you might do, if the hard drive, you think the hard drive is going bad, or, you know, you run in the disk, uh, the little disk, uh, right. what is it, like the wizard or whatever it does, right. where it walks through and tells you whether the drive is bad or not. Uh, I would recommend buying another drive, if the drive is indeed going bad, hooking that up as a slave, and then trying to pull your documents right. off of that slave drive. Because that's one of the other problems, is, is if you are going to, if you do run an application that will save the data off the, the damaged hard drive, is you've got to store it somewhere else. So you almost all, The easiest way to do it is have a second hard drive to copy that to. Right. Um, you know, if, if, if you know, some are also going to get email after this for like, you should also tell them they should yeah. do it, image the hard drive and put it on a second hard drive and never try to, you know, recover the data from the original hard drive, which is great if you have a lot of money and a lot of hard drives laying around. Check out this application, um, though. It allows you to boot from it as well. Disk Warrior is, is an awesome app. I know a few friends of mine that have had problems have used it. It's about, what, $70? Uh, I don't know, actually. There's the buy link right there. You can tell me better. And somewhere around there. It's we'll not too around pricey. There. Disk Warrior is from allsoft.com. Man, it's a, oh, I hate it when hard drives crash. Terrible thing. It's the worst feeling. Thanks Good luck, for the buddy. call. Now here's Sarah with one of our most frequently asked questions. That's right. Number two, we often get asked over the phone or in emails, what are the screensavers' favorite online sites to shop for the best computer deals? We're going to have your answer after the break along with more live calls like Steven from Pahrump, Nevada, who has a case of the randomly rebooting PC. We're going to try to help him out when the screensavers continue.
frequently asked question, what are the screensaver's favorite online shop sites to shop for the favorite computer deals? The best computer deals. Well, we run the gamut here at the screensavers. Patrick likes PriceWatch.com, Kevin's pick is ZipZoomFly.com, Dan prefers NewA.com, Yoshi swears by Frugal.com, and me, I like ToysRUs.com for the latest and greatest <laughs> RPGs. You know, like, hey, Mr. Godzilla, you want to play? No, die, 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 I'm not breathing fire. Oh, no. <laughs> Never ends well. Back to you. She does that at home, too. It's like, yeah, it's a little strange sometimes. <laughs> does that have a the broken window happen? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Stephen Jones is on the phone from Pahrump, Nevada. How are you doing, Stephen? Okay. How are you doing, Patrick and Kevin? How's Good. it going in Pahrump? That's a crazy town I haven't been to in a long time. Oh, I've lived here for about 12, 13 years now. Great illegal fireworks in Pahrump. That you is very true. You can't get them in Las Vegas, but you can just drive right over the hump to Pahrump and get them. <laughs> no, that's what they call it. The, yeah, that's a big kill. It's a big kill, yeah. yeah Not they that sure do. That, is that Nye County? Yes, it is. Yeah, that's where all the bad stuff goes down, right? That's not true. That's Bell's Kingdom. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. And a lot of fun trails to run around on. That's too. right. How oh, can we yeah, help you lots today? lots of trails. Got a good question for us today? Oh, I sure do. I had a computer built with an Asus A7V8X X, a motherboard and a 2500 XP uh, Athlon uh, CPU. Uh -huh. And this, this, this wonderful machine... Uh, it has a mind of its own. It reboots when it wants to. It turns itself on. It goes from COM3 to COM5 and won't go back. And of late, it's even, after about 10, 15 minutes, turning itself off. Hmm, well, you're getting closer to Area 51 out there in the <laughs> Nevada <laughs> Desert. You never know. That's messy. I yeah, mean, that it, is. It could be power issues. It could be BIOS issues. It could be a bad motherboard. Although the COM3, COM5 switch and stuff makes me wonder if something strange is going on in the operating system. Have you cleaned it out, reinstalled Windows XP yet, Stephen? No, that was why I was calling to find out what I should do in what order. I'd almost say I would do that first. Back your data off of it, wipe the system, format the drive, reinstall Windows XP, and... Do you recommend running any memory tests that we've shown on the show before? That's actually a pretty good idea. You can run mem tests. Might even be a good thing to do before. That but run? The, the, the stuff where it's like switching the COM ports, that almost sounds to me like either it's some snarky piece of, yeah. you know... Some component there doesn't seem there. something's right. Do you have... Uh, like branded RAM, or is it what the computer call, stores call house RAM? I have Kingston KVR 3333 X64C25512. Well, oh, That's good. well memorized. <laughs> no, I just read it off the card. <laughs> oh, okay. I feel better. I was like, wow. That house RAM is sometimes some of the problem, you know, those yeah. janky computer shops, but it sounds like you got a good system. Yeah, it sounds like, you know, everything's listed. I've, I've heard some people recently have had it, so our labs had some problems with Kingston, Kingston RAM. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but, you know, you can run Mentest 86, a nice free download. You can burn it to CD. That'll run, and basically, if it gives you a whole spiel of numbers down the screen, it means something's wrong with your memory. If it just sits there, you know, basically nothing's wrong. Um, I'd also reinstall Windows XP, um, you know, because it would, uh, you know, the randomly rebooting and shutting down and stuff is, you know, it could be a bad power supply. Maybe get it ups there, so they make sure to have constant power. Yeah, but, you know, where it's, if it's switching COM ports and stuff like that, it makes yeah. me think there's either something weird that's been installed on the operating system or, or just a bad install. Uh, I'd just start by like reinstalling Out in the Windows middle of nowhere, XP. maybe certain brownouts or something. Or, could be, know. but, boy, the switching COM ports, man. Yeah, that is weird. That's strange. Good luck. <laughs> Kenny joins us on the phone. Oh, Hey, Kenny. Hello. you got to start somewhere. How's it going? Just fine. I'm asking about the third-party drivers for Windows uh -huh. or graphics cards and motherboards. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that screen where it's like, this is not a Windows hardware qualification labs approved driver, and the sky will fall if you install it, but you can still do it anyway? Uh, no. Oh. I see those. those <laughs> Rats. They are official ones uh -huh. somewhat, but... They're not the official one from the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if they'll cause any problems. They seem to give some boost in frame rate, but not that much. Are you okay? So, there, are there what are drivers there, we talking about? Yeah, you're talking drivers. Are they from the card manufacturers, or is there some guy who's like, dude, I've so made your you know your card run faster? And are they where are you getting these drivers? <laughs> Video card drivers. Yeah, I have a vision of a guy with a brown trench coat going, I give you 20 more frames per second, man, fifty dollars. <laughs> Where are the drivers coming from, Kenny? Uh, so, some sites that do a lot of graphics card reviews and stuff. Mm -hmm. That there was, I have a, the name of one. Let me just find the file name. It, it's actually not, I've tried it for a while. It seems to work, but 
I've also had problems with the normal drivers too. Right. So I'm trying alternative ones. Are you talking about problems like the video quality, the speed, or your system randomly crashing? What kind of problems, Kenny? Uh, just the random crash, but I've diagnosed it down to memory. Right. I'm just trying to squeeze out more minutes on gameplay until I can replace the memory. Right. Uh, well, the graphics drive, I mean, we used to have the, there's this like fundamental rule used to be, anytime there's a problem with a system or a benchmark would crash, mm -hmm. you, you, you automatically blame the graphics driver right. first, you know, either either throttle back to a less advanced version of the graphics driver because, you know, they're, they're always releasing, you know, unofficial versions of the drivers that give more performance from, right. you know, the, the, the graphics chip and the graphics card vendors. I was going to say, um, one of the reasons there is third-party drivers to begin with is because the manufacturers sometimes don't get around to fixing the driver problems mm -hmm. as fast as they should be, or there's certain tweaks right. that these programmers, you get these hardcore geeky guys that add a little tweak to get you a little extra performance, and sometimes they can be good for the yeah. people that like to live on the bleeding edge of things. Yeah, know? but, you know, I'm real happy with what, you know, whatever you the like most advantage NVIDIA, ATI, well, so there's nothing worse than, like, you know, if you're finally clocking somebody in a game to have your system crash. Oh, yeah. I mean, no part doubt. of the problem is, Kenny, if, if you have problems with your memory, and your memory's crashing your system, you got to get the memory replaced. Yeah. A graphics driver's not going to fix that. If you want stability, get it from NVIDIA, get it from ATI, get it from the folks who built your card. If you're going anywhere else, you know, hopefully the people coding those drivers know what they're doing. Yeah, because that's, that's intense stuff. It's it serious is. programming. Hopefully that'll help you out. Yeah. Now here's Sarah with another one of her most frequently asked questions. Our next frequently asked question in today's show is something that manages to puzzle our viewers young and old day after day. The question, who is Prigger? We'll have your answer right after the break and we'll help Paul upgrade his Linksys firmware after these messages. Stay with us. We posed the very frequently asked question, who is Prager? Well, Prager is many things to many people. Here, he's an invaluable segment producer to us here at the Screensavers. He's also a gifted product liaison to our friends in the G4 Tech TV labs. He's a talented soccer player and coach to young, underprivileged children. He's an excellent Spanish translator due to an affluent childhood complete with a Guatemalan nanny. That is totally true. But most of all, he's a loving and devoted son to his parents. Mr. and Mrs. Prager. <laughs> Cheers to you, Prager, for all that you do. Prager for president! Yeah! Prager! And now back to the show. Good old Prager. An amazing man. Love Prager. Good people. And he's uh, available as a freelance soccer referee, too. Very true. <laughs> Paul Johnson's on the phone from Louisville, Kentucky. How hey, you Paul. Doing, Paul. Hey, what's going on? We're wondering, did, uh, did Sarah answer all your questions about David Prager? Producer extraordinaire? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I'm so glad. Glad to be a pal. How can we help you today, bud? Well, I mean, I don't know. I have no clue how to update my Linksys router. I mean, I was even trying to get that Linux on Linksys, and I couldn't do it. Linux on Linksys? Do you have the WRT54G? Yep. And did you download the files that I linked to? Yeah. And, and then what happened? Yeah, what happened? Well, two of them, I couldn't get them to open. And then... The other one, it would start, say, upgrading, and it said it couldn't find the server. And it'd be like, try again or something. I'd try it again, and it wouldn't do anything. Hmm. That's strange, because when you're doing the... For people at home that don't know, the Linksys router, the WRT54G, actually runs Linux inside of the router. Right. It's an embedded Linux, and it's really cool because you can flash it with a hacked ROM. It'll give you full access to the system. You can even Telnet SSH into it. You can mm -hmm. install things like Snort, where you can have an intrusion detection system. It's really cool, but it's pretty straightforward. All you should have to do is, when you said you couldn't get those files uh, to open up, did they have like a .gz, like a gzip extension on them? Or it would just say Windows doesn't know the file, and you know, kind of that thing. Yeah, it you sounds like they were done to open it and stuff. Yeah, I think you may have to, ex you're going to have to extract them first. The, you, do you have WinRAR on your machine? Uh, no, I have WinZip. Okay. You have WinZip, yeah. Win See, there's, uh, there's several different types of compression. Uh, this is uh, GZip. It's actually, they're doing it because it's the right. Linux, Unix side of things. And uh, a good application for Windows that will extract, I recommend this above and beyond over WinZip. It's WinRAR. It expand it. Oh, WinRAR is good. Yeah, WinRAR is awesome. It supports so many different file formats, including like mm -hmm. ISOs and like a lot of things that you would need, that you would love to have access to, including all the different uh, variations of Unix compression. So uh, you I can would get definitely... You that from RARLab.com. Yeah, RARLab.com is a place to download it, or you can go to download.com, either one. Type in WinRAR, download that, then it's going to allow you to extract the files that you need. I think it's like a bin file or somewhere mm -hmm. in there. Then you choose the upgrade button, or right. the upgrade bio 
Files button inside of the BIOS once you go into it, and then you will just actually just uh, click on the file, browse to it, click on Upgrade, and that's mm -hmm. all there is to it. It overwrites it, yeah. and then you're going to see all these different options, including like a signal strength booster, all these options that aren't in the original BIOS. It might be good just for fun to practice by doing a regular uh, update from Linksys on that, just so you can get used to where the buttons are and the software mm -hmm. is inside of there. Definitely. But yeah, if you can't, you know, if you can't unpack the files, you're not going to be able to install them. It's a fun hack, though. Do, yeah. do a search for it on uh, g4techtv.com. It will. Uh, the article should be up there. Is it up? I thought it wasn't going to be till next week. Well, this isn't airing for a few more weeks, uh, so it will be up. Gotcha. He's so good. <laughs> now it's time for a tip from, from Leo. Leo. Hey, Leo. It's T-shirt week, and yes, another T-shirt. Vintage geek. That's me. <laughs> Leo Laporte, your vintage geek, with a tip for webmasters on rollovers. Rollovers are a great way to make your page become more alive. You'll see them used all the time in, in menus and so forth. Basically, the idea is when the mouse rolls over an area on the screen, whether it's text or a graphic, it changes somehow to indicate, yeah, I see your mouse. When you click, it changes again. When you move it out, it changes again. Very imp easy to implement rollovers. In the old days, we did it with JavaScript. I'll show you how to do it with JavaScript. And then next time, I'm going to show you how to use cascading style sheets, because that's the latest. Here's a simple rollover. Uh, this is all on my website, leoville.com slash rollovers.html. If you place your mouse over this bold text, watch what happens. I get a little JavaScript alert. Look at that. Oh, oh. And you see, it's very simple. I've just put in the bold tag, on mouse over. That's the key to the whole thing. And on mouse over, I put up an alert that says, man, that text is bold. Well, that's a pretty trivial example. What about, and this is very commonly used, coloring text when a mouse ho hovers over it to let you know it's a link. Very simple. Once again, on mouse over, it's going to turn this text red. When the mouse goes out, it turns it blue again. Watch. Red, blue. You'll see this a lot on a lot of pages. Simple JavaScript, again, that can be done in cascading style sheets, and it can be done for the whole page. I just did it for one link. But the source code gives you an idea of how simple it is. Very commonly, we'll also see graphics rollovers. That's when they uh, have a button that changes when your mouse is over to say, click me, and changes again when you go mouse down. Here's a little picture of me. When I put my mouse over it, ah! Hey, I said when I put my mouse, ah! 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 <laughs> hey, how do, how do I do that? Very simple. You see, I'm just saying the source uh, file is the open version when the mouse is over, and then when the mouse goes out, the source file for that image changes to shut. Open and shut. It's an open and shut case. Rollovers could bring your page to life. Next time, we'll talk about cascading style sheets. That's the official way to do it. I like the old style. Back to you guys. That's because I'm a vintage geek. So. Very cool stuff. A lot of that stuff's built into Dreamweaver, and so mm -hmm. the people that don't like coding can also choose that route as well. Did you ever get wigged out when he wears a t-shirt? I am a little bit. That's yeah. strange. So there we are, folks. Next up, we're going to check our inbox to see what's on your minds. And the screen service continues. <laughs> Yoshi, we had a caller earlier, wanted to find a, a pre-modded, a professionally modded, a, a pay-for-modded case. Right. Actually, Yoshi found this oxide, the UFO Ultimate Aluminum nice. Cube Case in silver. It's a little bright, but it's dark. That's a crazy-looking case. I like it. It's square. It's got lights? It's got lights. Lots of lights. That'll scare the neighbors. Good one, Yosh. I like it. It's that time again. Sarah, do you have any fun? You see? They just <laughs> never stop having fun. That's RPGs at WizardOS.com. Josh in San Antonio says, are routers good firewalls? He asks, rather. Well, depends on whether you're like, you're talking about a home router, right? right. Not, not like a Cisco router. Depends on, on you know, who you think is going to try to crack through the firewall. Right. Routers are doing no, uh, typically like NAT, the network address translation, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, you're not really going to be alerted when mm -hmm. people are poking around certain right. firewalls. You can actually ins uh, inspect all the packets that are coming through to see what's going mm -hmm. on. Uh, it's like a cheap lock on your house. It's better than no lock at all if you don't trust the neighbors, but it's not as good as like paying mad money for a you know, triple deadbolt in a steel frame. <laughs> I can't say any more than that. That's <laughs> awesome. You know, the problem is, like, the next jump is spending, like, $400 for right. a hardware firewall. And that's Smooth wall you like, which is a little bit better. Yeah, that's, actually, it's true. It's a really solid firewall, and you build out any low-cost PC, smoothwall.org, to check for that one. Cool. Another Sarah. quick one? Real quick. Should I or should I not let SpyBot search and destroy remove the Windows DSO exploit files it finds when I run the program? You should update SpyBot, because that was a flaw that was a problem last year. Update, update, update. 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 <laughs> that is it for this edition of the Screensavers. I'm Kevin Rose. And I'm Patrick Jordan. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.
the Warrior Spirit of Voodoo to the extreme.